Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are enjoying my Ultima build thus far. As you saw in the last video, I fitted the center section uh, and with that came wrapping the dash and drilling all the holes for the AC vents and all my switches and the steering wheel. I got all that finalized. It's permanently riveted and secured into place and I fitted the uh, firewall with the heat shield like I talked about. Uh, so on this video, I'm finally going to fit the, what I hope to be the 1000 horsepower LT5 that you saw me build in my first video that I uploaded to the channel. And the reason I need to fit it before finalizing it is that I need to get the measurements to mount the dry sump. So the dry sump mounts on the driver's side or left side uh, of the car and it needs to bolt up to the frame rails and every car is a little bit different and I'm sure the tolerances are really good uh, in the factory chassis jig and all that but every car is slightly different so there's no dimensions provided for mounting the dry sump system so that's one thing that you need to do on your own which it shouldn't be a problem at all uh, so I need to get that measured then pull the engine then I'll finalize all my fuel lines my coolant lines as you guys saw in the other videos the radiator lines come from the front of the car and run all the way down the side and now there's just open pipes and all these coolant lines, intercooler lines just sitting there. So all that needs to be finalized before the final engine fit. So with that, we're going to fit this engine for the first time. Check it out. All right, so here we are all set up and ready to go. Just drop it down here into the engine cradle. Got it sitting here on a uh, Harbor Freight low leveler and uh, Got all this protected. I'm gonna try to put it in between those two posts. So the front of the engine, let me show you this. So the front of the engine actually, uh, from the alternator to this pulley is like about an inch, inch and a half wider than these two poles or roll cage bars. So what I'm gonna try to do is sort of finagle it in there and sort of dip the uh, alternator in there and then move it over uh, once it's in its final spot if I can't do that I'll just take off the alternator no big deal uh, I just don't want to I just want to see if I can actually get it in there in one shot instead of having to go back there when it's finally in and mess with the uh, the tensioner so there's two tensioners on here there's one for the 11 rib uh, supercharger drive and then there's like a normal maybe like six or seven rib or eight rib I don't know what it is uh, for the like the water pump the alternator stuff like that so the alternator as you can see sticks off over here and it just runs on this regular belt drive and the tensioner is actually right down there so it won't be too bad but just want to see if I can get it done in one shot as you can see I got my uh, throttle body relocation elbow on there so I gotta make sure if that works if not I can go in and sort of tweak the settings and then print out a new one uh, so let's get this going, see if I can manage.
All right, so here it is in the car. It's actually pretty simple, a uh, lot simpler after I took the alternator off, which you could see in the time lapse. I was just like, you know what, maybe I could do it. But yeah, it was definitely hanging up right here, but it doesn't look like clearance is that bad right there so that I won't be able to, uh, to put uh, a wrench or a ratchet on the tensioner. I could actually access it from underneath the car. I could probably get into it from here and it's no big deal. And I just left that belt sort of uh, just looped around where the alternator was. So definitely no problem. So next steps are to put the header on this side and it's gonna come out kind of right here and then loop back and then the dry sump tank lives right here. So I just have to make sure it clearances and then there's a plate that I'll have to make that's gonna get riv nutted into here and then I will then riv nut the uh, tank holder to that. And then that's pretty much it. Then I just need to run my fuel lines. I'll have to put my fuel filter down there somewhere probably secure it with like some p-clips or I think I actually ordered some cool mounts for it and then literally the whole fuel system is from here filter and then right there so nothing very very easy then after that it'll be putting the clutch on the adapter plate for the Porsche transaxle that will come to here and then just do the axles and then put all the connectors to all the different sensors and switches and everything that's all done. And then I have a little uh, billet thing that will connect these AC lines to the AC compressor. And then the AC dryer actually mounts to right here. And then other than that, it's just putting some, uh, some AN lines to connect the tanks. And then there's a dash 12 AN line that will come from the uh, dry sump tank to under there. So no big deal at all. And uh, we're definitely on the home stretch. All right, so like I said, I was going to mount the headers up and just sort of make some mental and actual measurements of where I want everything to go, right back there along the firewall. Like I said, I gotta run the crossover tubes, some electrical, and, uh, and really that's it. I went ahead and made some heat shields for the headers since they sit right above the tanks. And on the picture that Ultima posts on their site, there's a heat shield above the each tank, but that wasn't supplied with my kit. So I don't know if that was an option or whatever, but I didn't see it or else I probably would have ordered it. But I just went ahead and made it out of that nice DEI heat shield and some aluminum. So it'll be riveted to the chassis once I have the engine in, but before I put the headers in. And then I also made a plate back there. You can kind of see it is right there where the dry sump tank will mount to. I had to make sure that I got all my measurements correct because the cold air intake on this car flows from out here and then I have to cut a hole in this and then it comes out and around down through here. So it comes out there and uh, the filter sits right above the fuel tank but you gotta make sure that this tube coming over uh, doesn't interfere with the dry sump tank that sits right here. So that all should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the engine now uh, for the last time. And then I'm going to finalize all those things and then we'll be good to go.
All right, so I pulled the engine and I went ahead and mounted the dry sump tank. Uh, it has to be pulled out, obviously, before the engine's fully fit, but I just want to make sure that everything's good to go so that when I do put it down in that little nook, it will screw in really easily. And then I also made, there's a circular cut out there that will be for the cold air intake to go into that sort of little nook right there so it can get the uh, the cold air. It is so close though, like it's, you can kind of tell like it almost doesn't look like there's enough room there, but there there is. So we'll have to get that going and it's definitely gonna be tight. I'm thinking about putting some, maybe some horizontal slots on the dry sump tank so that I can at least like adjust it a little bit, uh, which I'll probably have to do and then cinch it down nice and tight uh, for the final assembly. Uh, but definitely tight. Everything looks good though. Everything turned out really well. Uh, I went ahead and finalized the front as well. So you can check this out. Uh, rivets right there and then all along the front. I gotta put that grommet in, but that's the main power to the uh, Ultima loom. I got the Tilton reservoir, got the front brakes, rear brakes, clutch cylinder, still need to run the lines there. Got the washer tank that has a little tube that comes out right there. So it has a windshield washer. Uh, I've got the plate right there for the fuse box. Um, like I said, everything's good to go right there. This one, <laughs> it's kind of funny there, there weren't rib nuts for this. So I use my, these are M5 and uh, I ran out of rib nuts. So I'm waiting to fix that plate. I have these coming today. So I need just one rib nut. I had to order a hundred on Amazon though, uh, such as life. Also, I'm going to be setting the ride height of this. I already set the ride height of the rear, which is 160 millimeters measured from the floor to that furthest rear crossbar. Uh, I did it with the engine in and I put it like two millimeters high because I know that the, the clam is gonna have to sit there and like a couple other little things in the transmission. Maybe I did, I think like four millimeters actually. Transmission is gonna have to sit there so that when it squats, it'll be perfect. Then I'm going to do the alignment and I got this. It's these plates that uh, you put a tape measure here, tape measure there, and uh, you put them on either side. And it's actually, they have really good reviews. So you can set up a uh, tow, camber, everything you need to do for this car. It's pretty simple. Uh, so first I need to set ride head up front. And then also I finalized and programmed my aim dash. So I'll show you that right now, and then that'll be it. All right, so here's the aim dash, pretty much ready to go. So you turn the key for the car, the ignition. It starts up, there's my dogs uh, with an outline of the Ultima. All right, so this is really cool. So you can actually go in here and configure like every single one of these gauges. So default, I think it was like, I don't know, I think it was like 16,000 RPM, so I sat, I set that up for 8,000 RPMs because my red line's probably gonna be around like seven, seven on this car with my fuel cut off at like maybe like 73, 7,400. And then what you can do is you can program it to look for uh, analog gauges, which I have in the back and I have oil pressure, water temp and fuel pressure that will be set up for, uh, for analog gauges. Then it will also read all the CAN data from the ECU. So I have ECU intake air temperature right here, and then it's gonna do the RPM signal. And I'm also thinking about doing a separate page because you can do multiple pages and go through them over here. There's a little button and have all the ECU uh, sensors or readouts for the same exact things right here. Uh, this is the satellite number down there. This is the GPS unit uh, right here. And for some reason it says that I have 0.2 miles on this thing, even though it hasn't moved or even started. Uh, it's some sort of glitch, obviously. I've got the uh, voltage from the battery and you can go through and do so many things with this. I thought that this was just like, you know, a digital dash where it would show like RPM and speed. This thing does so many things. You can do like tire temperature, tire pressure, ride height, anything. It's all expandable, tons of sensors, and it's all programmable to where you can have like all kinds of different things on here. There's shift lights above here that I can program. I already did program 
and I think I have them in like 600 RPM increments, like all the way to redline. Really, really cool. Uh, very, very, very happy. This uh, GPS sensor, I think I'm gonna mount it uh, up here. So let me show you, I've already got, that's like the inside of the car. It's just, you know, typically where your rear view mirror would go, like right here. And I do have a, uh, I do have a digital rear view mirror. Sorry, the camera won't focus that well but I have that outputs for the rear view camera. There's gonna be a front, there's a front view camera. And then I think I'm gonna run the wire up and then have that GPS unit sitting like right here next to the windshield. Uh, speaking of 3D printers, I ran into an issue and I'll show you that right now. All right, so like I showed in the last video, I need to do a throttle body relocation. I made one out of PLA, which is that white uh, plastic. It's really brittle. So I'm gonna be printing it out of carbon fiber nylon. And this was, this right here was 29 hours of printing. And it doesn't look all that great. So I was thinking it was like a huge fail. And then I went on and read that you're actually supposed to use a slightly larger nozzle. So I got that nozzle and it's printing perfectly right now. So I just need to wait three days for it to be done. Uh, but this stuff, so there were some people in the comments that said like, you know, be careful about the strength and everything. and you know, this thing could break. And then like when you let off the gas, it'll cause like different pressure in here that could collapse this. So I was worried until it printed out this piece and I wish I could do some sort of demonstration, but this stuff is so strong. Like, I don't even know like how to show you guys, but like, like there's not even like a, like a mark on this stuff. It is crazy strong. Like I was gonna put the, uh, the engine hoist hook like right here and lift up the back of the car but I didn't want like anything to like if this thing broke and flew across or like you know dented something I'd be pretty ticked off just for a demonstration but this stuff I have no worries at all anymore it is so strong so that's printing I'll probably show you that in the next video and uh, that's about it for this one all right so like I just said that'll be a wrap for this video uh, I know it doesn't look like I got a lot done visually on the car but really there's very little to go and I actually did get a decent amount done in this video for the final assembly. Uh, I only need to tidy up the rear, uh, do, run all the wires and stuff like that. That's probably like half hour of work, not bad at all. Uh, one thing I did that I didn't show on camera was I downloaded the stock ECU file and I actually reached out to Jeremy Formato at Faster Proms. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and he's an LT LS tuner, probably one of the best out there. So he agreed to give me a startup tune and then I'm gonna end up towing the car to him once I have everything started, make sure I'm firing on all cylinders and good to go. I don't wanna take it there and then have it, you know, something wrong and then I have to bring it all the way back. Uh, so next video, this thing is going to start up 100%. So stay tuned and uh, thank you guys for watching. Like I said in every video, leave your comments, suggestions, criticisms down below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.